Okay, y'all. Um, I want to tell you there was a question that I got more than once, and it was about handling biblical conflicts. In our book, It's No Secret, one of the study questions, in fact, it was number four, it's on page 95, and it talks about how Jesus says we must forgive someone three times. That was the deal back in Bible days. Of course, um, now we know really we need to forgive someone as many times as it takes. That doesn't always mean that we invite them back to be a regular part of our lives, but when we forgive someone, it actually gives us the freedom to move forward, to move on and not live in bondage or live dwelling on what that person has done to us or the pain maybe they brought into our lives. It just allows us to move on. But the question said, you know, how many times should you forgive someone? What do you think this means? And at what point are you free to retaliate? Well, this question itself was exactly why I made forgiveness our word of the week last week. Forgiveness, truly, if you don't forgive someone, it creates a wall between you and that person or you and a lot of times living a free and full life. As with retaliation, when are you free to retaliate? You're not free to retaliate, and I know that's hard. And sisters, I will tell you, I have retaliated, and um, it has not been a helpful or good thing at all. In fact, it just created more conflict in my life. I have found that when I retaliated, that usually was a time when I wasn't trusting God. In fact, I chose to say, hey, God, I don't want to do it your way, so I'm going to take matters into my own hands. I don't like the way I've been treated. I'm going to let that person know what I think about them, or I'm going to get them back, or whatever. And, you know, a lot of times we are wronged, and sometimes we're wronged over and over again. But I think retaliate is the word that we need to look at. We don't need to retaliate. We don't need to go get them because truly revenge is for the Lord. Let's pray for them. Let's ask God to work on their heart. Now, this doesn't mean, I believe Rachel blogged about this in her post. It was called, I'll get you my pretty and your little dog too. I hope you guys read that last Thursday. It was fabulous. But she talks about how it doesn't mean that we're a doormat. It doesn't mean that we just lay there and allow abuse to happen in our lives. But what we can do instead of retaliating is, like I just said, we can pray for that person. Jesus says to pray for our enemies, you know, and trusting God and doing things God's way is not the easy way out. In fact, often it's difficult, but we can trust God to take care of that, and we can bring closure to a situation. We can let someone know that they've hurt us, that they've wronged us, and that we just cannot have that in our lives anymore. It's okay to bring closure to a situation by stepping away from being a part of someone's life. That is okay. It's okay to ask someone to give you space. And um, if you need to express how you feel, you can do it, and it's okay to walk away. Don't feel like you have to remain a part of someone's life. And if there's someone that is just a part of your life, then um, that's something you totally have to go to the Lord for. For instance, if someone you need to forgive is somebody that you live with, then I would suggest if you're having a hard time dealing with this, that you seek some Christian counseling in your area and um, get some help with that. There is no shame in doing that. But retaliation, eh -eh, we don't want to do it. We want to forgive the person and possibly move out of their lives or at least um, separate ourselves from the pain that they brought us. I know that's not the best answer, and I know it's hard, but it doesn't mean you lay down and take it. But we don't have to go and get revenge and retaliate either. So I hope that helps to all the people who wrote and asked that question, because there was about 10 of you. All right, on to the next. <laughs>